I am I'm reading from uh Jesus calling from Sarah Young, and I know I don't know who she is, but I will find out and explain that to you on the later the next one. I like reading from her because it's I find it very inspiring to me. And it is December fifteenth, and it's on hope. So during her your longing for me he, for heaven is good because of his extension. Of your yearning for me. The hope of heaven is meant to strengthen and encourage you. Filling you with wonder, wondrous joy. Many Christians misunderstand the word of hope. And many do. Believe me that is denotes wishful thinking. Hope is something you have inside of you. It's not wishful thinking. You hope of a better day. You ain't wishing for a better day. Because wishes are wishes. But. If you believe in God with hope, hope is very, very achievable. Believing that denoting that believing that it denotes wishful thinking, nothing can be further from the truth. As soon as I become your savior, heaven became your ultimate destination. I hope I get to heaven. No. God is your savior. You're going to heaven. It's how you betray yourself. Where your place is in heaven. The phrase "hope of heaven" enlightens the benefits of your uh, benefits that you can enjoy even while remaining on earth. This hope keeps you spiritually alive during the darkest times of adversary. It brightens your path and lightens your awareness of your, my presence. My desire is that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I've always seen hope that way. Hope is not for you know a better time. It's hope for this. No, I hope because when you lose hope, you lose everything to me. There's a verse in the Bible. I'd have to look it up. It says something about Hope is the evidence of faith, and faith is the evidence of things unseen. If you lose hope, then you, you have, have no nothing. Faith. You have nothing. If you have faith, you, you always have hope. hope. <laughs> and tomorrow, it starts out, I am speaking. Mm-hmm. You don't have any more tassels? Mm-hmm. I'm using it to mark something else. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll. <coughs> it is raise his hand in there. He's doing something. Wrong. Our squirrel's going crazy in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he's building a remote or something. I don't know. I hear metal banging. He's a pretty clever guy. December 15th, approved to God. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. Um, this is talking about being approved to God. Do you know the acceptable sacrifices to God? Book of Proverbs teaches us that the acceptable sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. When you get your feelings hurt, you'll find that humility that it requires to crawl before the throne. To crawl before the throne, smell like crack, meth, alcohol. Crawl before the throne, cry my eyes out with guilt. <sighs> Crawl before the throne. If you cannot express yourself well on each of your beliefs, work and study until you can. Why do you believe what you believe? A lot of people say they believe a lot of things. I say... I came to believe in God as a young man in jail. 
I came to know God as a dying man on his deathbed, dying of AIDS. That was in 1999. I know God heals. If you don't know what you believe and why you believe it, other people may miss out on the blessing that come from knowing the truth. Study to show thyself approved. Strive to re-express a truth of God to yourself clearly and understandably, and God will use that same explanation when you share it with someone else. A truth of God. I just gave you one. Faith in jail. I come to know I'm glad God spared him. God on my deathbed. But you must be willing to go through God's wine press where the grapes are crushed. How's God get the sweetest wine? Wine in the New Testament oft times is symbolic for the spirit. How does God get the sweetest wine, the sweetest spirit out of us? He has to crush us, just like the grapes. I'm a crushed grape. Yes, sir. You must struggle, experiment, rehearse your words to express God's truth clearly. I made key points in the back of my Bible, and I set out to prove them wrong. And I didn't, and I couldn't. Those key points became the key points of my faith. Then the time will come when that very expression, you will become God's wine of strength to someone else. But if you are not diligent and say, I'm not going to study and struggle to express this truth in my own words. I'll just borrow my words from someone else. If you're borrowing words from someone else, you haven't lived it yet. You don't have your own experience. That's the whole thing of God. Is being everybody's called by God, but in their own voice, in their own language, and by their own name. Sound familiar? Try to state to yourself what you believe to be the absolute truth of God, and you will be allowing God the opportunity to pass it on through you to someone else. What is your personal experience with God today? If you don't have one, I dare you. I dare you. Just ask him. Many of us, many people have heard his testimony. Me, myself, started out as a little child, six, seven-year-old, lying in my bed at night with my hands stretched out to the ceiling. Going, God, if you're real, I want to know you. I want to know you. If you're up there, God, show me you're real. Here is 55 years later. How really is. Always make it a practice to stir your own mind thoroughly to think through what you have easily believed on everything, everything. It's your life. It's your eternity. If you're not thinking about it, then you're not very fucking smart. Pardon my language. Your position is not really yours until you make it yours through suffering and study. You can't hold my position. Nobody can hold my position. You have to hold your own. God will give you one. The author or speaker from whom you learn the most is not the one who teaches you something you didn't know before, but the one who helps you to take a truth with which you have quietly struggled, give it expression, and speak it clearly and boldly. I don't know why, so maybe somebody needs to hear this, but God does heal. He does. You know, God doesn't always answer prayers the way we want but he always answered prayers when you pray for a prayer pray a prayer start looking for the answer immediately what's the next phone call you get what's the next event in your life and sometimes it may be not the next but look three or four down it, it can happen Believe well me. sometimes it's just no sometimes it's you're not ready for this and sometimes mm-hmm. I got other plans. Some of God's best answer prayers are the ones he don't answer. It was so hard for me to swallow why God would answer my prayer to let my son come and stay with me and 
get cleaned up and get a good job, get this girl up here and start working. And how everything could went so perfect the best years of my life and his too. We've been killing it. I still got 10 racks in the bank, money invested right now, just off of what me and him did in 18 months. Amazing. I wish I'd have done that my whole life. It is too. Yes, but sir. we didn't. But I was mad and I couldn't understand why God would allow my son to go while he would take him at a time like that. When I finally thought everything had worked out, we were going to have some peace and some, some serenity and some security and some forward motion and some progress, and prosperity. The greatest time of our life and Zach dies. But now I look back and I thank God every day of my life we got to share such a great, productive, and positive 18 months. It had its pitfalls and struggles, obviously, but Still yet, my son went to his death with me knowing he was making the right decisions and that he was choosing the good over the bad. That he chose the good over the bad. I know God had been dealing with him. In the days before he passed, he said things to me that amazed me. Like he said his next girlfriend he wanted to try to go to church to find that he was tired of uh, people like Chelsea and Megan, which if you meet somebody at the trap house, then that's what you got is a trap house home or fucking want to be dirty South dope boy. You're not going to find true love, romance or a partner there. You will find somebody who will use you, abuse you, drop you off on the corner, leave you for a day and a half, come back and then let his friends gang rape you. This is life. This is the dope world. If you're in the dope world, you don't stand a chance of finding anything but misery and pain and suffering. But nevertheless, I know my son was, was working past it. He was an addict in recovery. I'm an addict in recovery. I've been an addict my whole life. Yes. I broke down the first week. I had a relapse the first week of his death. Thank God God touched me and I sobered up. Of course, it didn't help that somebody come all the way from Tennessee to put the shit in my hand. But nevertheless, I've been drug free ever since because the only thing I can change about this world is me. And in memory and love and respect, I didn't honor him the way I should have in his life. But I will honor him in his death and that I will never ever use narcotics again. They won't even be in my house. In case somebody bring a dope in my house, I'll beat their ass and throw them out. I love y'all. I hope my words can help encourage even one single person. God bless you all. I mean, I ain't really doing this for anybody. It just seems to help us. And it gives us something to do that's positive. Deuces.